Okay, going live. I would say start when we uh, start when it's 10 a.m. Okay, we have zero attendees right now, so. Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for a webinar on the California Ocean Acidification Action Plan. We'll get started in just a minute or two. Hi hey everyone, let's just, we're going to start in just one minute. Great. Thank you for joining us today for a webinar on the California Ocean Acidification Action Plan. We're scheduled from 10 until 11 a.m. The purpose of this webinar is to provide an overview of the draft California Ocean Acidification Action Plan, as well as an opportunity for members of the public to ask questions and provide input. I'm Layla Sievenen, a program scientist at the Ocean Science Trust in Oakland, California. I'll be hosting this webinar on behalf of the Ocean Protection Council. Also on the call from the OA Action Plan project team, our Ocean Protection Council staff, Jen Phillips, who will be presenting today, and Whitney Berry and Haley Carter from Ocean Science Trust. Liz Cherneski is a consultant who greatly contributed to the action plan development as well. This Zoom webinar is being recorded. It'll be posted to the Ocean Protection Council Action Plan Project page. The link is on this slide following the webinar. Public participants are logged in as listen in only and we'll be saving questions until the end. And you can ask questions in two ways. You can either chat in your questions to us at any time during the webinar using the chat box on Zoom and we can pose those to the group. If you'd like to send a private comment, you can send it to Ocean Science Trust, otherwise send questions to everyone. Or you can raise your hand and we'll call on you to speak. We'll be able to unmute you and you may need to unmute the line on your end as well. Unfortunately, we can't unmute call in only participants, but please reach out to us following the webinar and we can address any questions that you have then. The draft action plan is now available for public comment through Friday, August 31st. This webinar is designed to walk you through the Ocean Acidification Action Plan and provide some background on how the plan came to be in order for you to have an opportunity to ask questions and provide comments. 
Input received today will be considered during the revision of the action plan, but we also encourage you to submit more detailed comments to the Ocean Protection Council through the formal public comment process. So in the next 35 minutes, Jen Phillips will be providing an overview of the draft of the action plan, as well as next steps um, like public comment revisions, adoption, and upcoming events. And then there'll be a discussion and you'll be able to ask questions. And Jen Phillips is the climate change policy advisor at the Ocean Protection Council. She leads their work on ocean acidification and hypoxia, as well as other climate change efforts. And before we jump into the presentation, we have a quick poll for you all to fill out to get a sense of who is with us today. And a poll should be popping up on your screen with three questions. So please enter your answers to those questions. We'll give everyone a couple of minutes to finish. Okay, great. It looks like everyone's done. So I think all of you should be able to see the results. Um, the majority of people we have, we have 56% of our people um, are from government, 22% from NGOs. We have a good distribution. Otherwise, um, the majority of people are either somewhat familiar or unfamiliar with the action plan, which is great. Um, hopefully become more familiar at the end of this webinar. And most people are members of the International Alliance to combat ocean acidification. So welcome everyone with that. Jen, I'll turn it over to you to start sharing your screen. Hello, everyone. This is Jen. Um, I accidentally hung up rather than unmuted myself, so I'm sorry about that. Can you all hear me? Yep, sounds good. Great. I'm just going to um, pull up my slides, and hopefully you can see my slides now, too. Yep, looks good. Thanks, Jen. Okay, so sorry about that. Still learning how to work this phone. Um, so yeah, I am Jen Phillips. I am a climate policy advisor here at the Ocean Protection Council and um, the California Ocean Protection Council is leading the state of California action plan on ocean acidification. So today I'll give you an overview of the plan, why we're doing it, the components that are in it. Um, and I'm probably not going to take the full 35 minutes that Layla mentioned because I really want to save a lot of time at the end for discussion and hearing from all of you. So before I kind of dive in, I definitely want to acknowledge the team that's behind the scenes and um, front and center in all of this, and that is Haley and Layla at Ocean Science Trust, our consultant, Liz Torneski, that really helped in the initial drafting and scoping of this plan, and our Climate Change Sea Grant Fellow here at Ocean Protection Council, Whitney Berry. So without this group of people, we could not get this done and have a successful plan, ultimately. So um, just to start, and you'll probably see this in the draft plan, but um, what we're doing here with the State of California Ocean Acidification Action Plan is not starting from scratch. We are really building on a body of work and um, a response from West Coast jurisdictions 
to um, these upwelling corrosive waters. And really, you know, we, we've been doing a lot in this space over the past several years, and this action plan serves to codify and build on those efforts while laying out a bold plan for the next several years. So this action plan is really um, a first step in a much longer effort in making sure that we continue to carry this momentum forward and we continue to be responsive to our changing conditions along the West Coast and responsive to legislation that's passed and science investments that the OPC and other, and other entities have made. So one such thing that um, is charging us to think through and do this action plan is Assembly Bill 2139. Um, this bill was signed by Governor Brown in September of 2016, and it stemmed from the recommendations of the West Coast Ocean Acidification and Hypoxia Science Panel. So it charged us to do a lot of things. It really charged us to be responsive to all of those recommendations in the science panel, and it also um, asked that we facilitate agreements across national, state, and regional governments um, to jointly establish priorities for the future. Um, the other thing that is really charging us to do this action plan is the International Alliance to Combat Ocean Acidification. So that International Alliance was officially launched in December of 2016, and it brings together jurisdictions across the globe to highlight ocean acidification as an immediate threat to coastal economies and ocean ecosystems. Um, the Alliance has five goals and it really, um, it really brings us together. Hold on one second, everyone. Sorry about that, I'm dealing with a little bit of a cough. But um, the Ocean Acidification Inter International Alliance has kind of five goals, and it really looks to advance the scientific understanding of ocean acidification, take meaningful actions to address the causes of acidification, protect the environment and coastal communities from the impacts of a changing ocean, expand our public awareness and understanding of acidification, and build support for addressing this global problem. In order to really tackle these goals, members of the International Alliance, of which California is a founding member, commit to developing these action plans to chip away at these five goals. And there's several of us early joiners of the International Alliance to Combat Ocean Acidification that are currently putting together our action plans. Um, and because California was sort of out front and joining and leading this International Alliance, we are hoping to set a bold vision for what an action plan can look like and how we can chip away at an issue that feels daunting and feels intractable at times. So um, there's on the OA Alliance website, there's a sort of general pathway to creating an action plan across your jurisdiction. So first, it's really reviewing the OA Alliance call to action and the resources that this team has put together. Um, a, in particular, a toolkit that lays out different sort of actions and strategies for addressing OA. Um, then within your jurisdiction, looking really deeply at what you have already done and future actions that you're capable of doing depending on um, things that are, depending on the circumstances and policy um, foundation within your jurisdiction. Um, after really doing that, um, governments are asked to sort of outline a letter of commitment to being part of the OA Alliance and developing an action plan. So Governor Brown um, outlined and signed this letter of commitment about a year ago, and now the California Ocean Protection Council is looking to develop this detailed action plan and through that have a really robust public process to make sure that it is a plan that fits all of us across the state of California. Um, so again, just to reiterate, 
The primary purpose is really a roadmap for the state of California to take tractable actions and make strategic investments. But we're focusing, um, of course, on California, but we're really casting this in with, within a regional, national, and international context. So you'll see throughout the plan that it sometimes um, addresses ocean acidification as a standalone issue, really to raise awareness about this issue along our California current. Um, and at other times, it looks at ocean acidification within the context of other drivers um, as appropriate given our current policy and management circumstances. Um, I will say that this was a really active and deliberate choice whether we address OA as a standalone issue or when we look at it within the context of other environmental stressors. Um, and we'll, we'll be e eager to hear your thoughts on that in the discussion period of this. So before we really even got to producing the public comment draft, which I'm sure um, many of you have opened or have looked at, um, the Ocean Acidification Action Plan public comment draft really benefited from many efforts of people who contributed their time and input into the plan's development. Some of you I know are on the line, so I wanna thank you for sitting with us on the phone or sitting in person and kind of walking through what you think this plan should look like. Um, so that plan was developed and informed by the ideas and advice of more than 70 people from across the aquaculture and fisheries industries, state and national governments, private philanthropy, and scientific community. We really asked these people, and um, again, many of you are on the line, about kind of your aspirations for what this action plan could look like, recommended actions that you think we should include, and sort of just how to advice. Um, we did a lot of these interviews before even writing the plan to really scope out what our 10-year vision should be, what those tractable actions should be that we include in the plan, and how we ensure that the plan is widely adopted and successfully implemented. We also really looked to um, California's newly convened Ocean Acidification and Hypoxia Science Task Force that was established under Assembly Bill 2139, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and that task force seeks to provide scientific and technical input into the draft plan, um, specifically relating to ocean acidification monitoring and observations, the applications of submerged aquatic vegetation, and water quality issues. Um, this science task force is also developing a supporting science plan, which is one of the um, appendices of this action plan. And that science plan will be um, ready for release and consideration when the plan is adopted later this year. Um, in addition to you know, having many of these interviews and conversations and looking to our science task force, we also were really learning from other action planning efforts. So the state of Washington has done a lot with their Blue Ribbon Panel on Ocean Acidification, as well as their addendum. Um, the, the state of Oregon, Maine, British Columbia, Monaco, Latin America, and the Caribbean are all in different phases of thinking through and developing action plans. And we also heavily leaned on the OA Alliance toolkit that kind of lays out a bunch of different options and strategies for how you need a really multi-pronged and multidisciplinary approach to think about a challenge like ocean acidification. So um, one thing you'll see at the beginning of this plan, which I think ensures that we are a really bold and visionary um, State when it comes to thinking about ocean acidification. It's a 10-year vision for action to address ocean acidification. So this, um, before even launching in what, into what we can do over the near term, it outlines and prescribes where we want to be by 2018. And it really lays out our state's aspirations for making progress on ocean acidification. So there are three components to that vision that I'll just quickly touch on. One is mobilizing the state. The second is taking action, and the third is advancing science. So when it comes to mobilizing the state, what you'll see outlined in that vision is that policymakers, resource managers, the public, and ocean industries 
will understand that ocean acidification is a major impact of global emissions and that the people that are most likely to be affected by OA know what they have at stake and are actively helping to um, helping the state to advance solutions. Similarly, the state of California, working in partnership with many others outside of the state, have mobilized to reduce the causes and adapt to unavoidable impacts of ocean acidification. The next component of that vision is taking action. So this really thinks about um, how we lay out California's efforts so that they result in significant reductions in CO2 emissions and other pollutants that cause OA how we um, have active stewardship um, along our coasts and estuaries to host robust eelgrass, salt marsh, and kelp forests that support thriving fisheries, and how we improve our understanding of whether, where, and how these habitats can help to locally slow or sequester, slow OA or sequester carbon, um, and how that can be applied across state policies and industries. The last component of this vision is thinking about how we continue to need to advance science to keep up with the um, growing knowledge that we're gaining of this field. So um, this vision really sets and outlines how we need a robust scientific infrastructure for developing and delivering decision relevant information about current and future patterns, causes, and impacts of OA, um, and how that information provides California Californians with a greatly improved understanding of our ocean conditions and ecosystem. Um, this type of science is really infused into everything we do so that we have um, improved understanding of kind of how these, how this science informs our day-to-day -day actions, investments, and long-term planning. So, um, then sort of diving into the meat of the action plan beyond the vision. The action plan lays out six co-equal strategies, which really make up the organizing framework for the action plan. So strategies are listed on this slide, but they include preparing for the full range of OA risks and impacts, activating the responsible elements and entities across state governments, reducing the pollution that causes ocean acidification, so both local pollutants and greenhouse gases, deploying living systems to slow ocean acidification and store and sequester carbon, build resilience of affected communities, industries, and interests, and importantly, um, kind of going back to why we're here and why we're doing this, engaging beyond state boundaries, because OA knows no boundaries, and we're doing this because California is firmly committed to being a member and a leading member of the Ocean Acidification International Alliance. So I'm gonna dig into just a couple of the strategies, um, but again, would really encourage you to sort of follow along on the public comment draft and ask any questions if things are confusing or you need clarification. So strategy one really thinks again about preparing for the full range of ocean acidification risks and impacts. So in general, we, we don't have a completely clear picture of what is at stake for California as ocean, ocean acidification conditions intensify. So we need to identify the risks that ocean acidification poses um, to really be as most helpful as possible to those that will be affected by ocean acidification and help prepare those um, affected for the coming decades. So um, in each of these strategies, you'll see that we lay out two to three sort of overarching actions and nested within those actions are sub actions um, that can be addressed. And all of these are sort of built on a five year timeline. So what are our big goals within each of these strategies over the next five years and what are the associated actions and sub actions that we can be taking right away. So one of the actions or a few of the actions here with strategy one is to conduct a statewide vulnerability assessment to identify the risks ocean acidification poses and options for um, improving our societal adaptive capacity. 
Another is to make targeted investments in monitoring and observation um, to really make sure that we are serving users' needs and we're providing decision-relevant information. Um, and the last action is to characterize how interactions between ocean acidification and other environmental changes happening concurrently will affect California's coastal and ocean ecosystems. So the second strategy is again to um, activate the different entities and players across the California state government. Um, and really, California's success in addressing ocean acidification demands engagement of a much broader set of state agencies and programs, including those whose missions and actions will be will affect or be affected by ocean acidification. And there are many um, entities at this point that are thinking about ocean acidification as very much on Californians' radars, but we need to um, make sure that we all understand the different way in which it can be elevated um, to our kind of core core missions and core goals over the near term. Um, luckily, we have models already across California state government in the climate space of successful multi-agency governance that can be exported and tailored for our work on ocean acidification. And examples include um, our recent work on developing a sea level rise policy guidance, as well as a lot of our work on preparing for climate adaptation more broadly. Um, so again, a couple of the driving actions for this strategy include fully integrating ocean acidification into California state government policies, plannings, and operations. And one um, such way that we hope to accomplish this action, and you'll see this outlined um, in the plan, is to establish an interagency ocean acidification working group of senior level staff from the full set of agencies whose decisions affect or will be affected by ocean acidification. And this type of work, interagency working group will really help to track the implementation of the plan and make sure that it is um, updated and refined over time so that we are um, chipping away and being responsive. So the next action is to ensure the, act, the implementation of the plan. And this really means clearly identifying and targeting funding um, and diverse funding. So in-state, federal funding, foundation funding, and so on. Um, and, you know, fully, I, we do recognize that Ocean Protection Council will really lead a lot of this and track a lot of this implementation of the action plan, but we will definitely look to existing state interagency groups um, to make sure our activities are coordinated and we are all as supported as possible. So the third strategy um, talks about how we need to reduce the pollution that causes ocean acidification. And you'll see here in this strategy that we talk both about greenhouse gas, gases as well as locally generated pollution. Um, so already in California, we have a really well-established program to reduce greenhouse gases. Um, and more recently, we have paid attention to um, the natural and working lands. So that would include our oceans and coastlines so that we have more of an opportunity um, to elevate these systems and to consider how these systems will help reach our greenhouse gas targets and um, can be more firmly incorporated in that greenhouse gas program. Um, we also need to, across this strategy, look to how locally generated pollution has the potential to accelerate coast rates of coastal ocean acidification um, and how we can chip away at that while we are continuously driving on reducing greenhouse gas emissions. So actions here, I've sort of already touched on it, but really integrating ocean acidification and our coastal and ocean ecosystems into the state of California's emissions reduction program. Um, and meanwhile, thinking locally about the different sources and local waterborne and airborne pollution that can exacerbate coastal ocean acidification. And we're already doing some of this across the state and with many of our academic partners, but developing different 
technical tools for evaluating how coastal ocean acidification um, attributes to locally intensified ocean acidification. Um, so we are doing that through um, a lot of different modeling and sort of identifying sources of different ocean acidification signals. So the fourth strategy, and I'll move along here again so we have a little bit more time at the end to talk, but this, this um, addresses how we need to deploy living systems to both slow ocean acidification and store and sequester carbon. Um, so I've touched on this before a little bit with strategy three, but we really have an opportunity in California to leverage the collective benefits of the state's seagrass meadows, salt marshes, and kelp forests, and the plants that dominate these systems for both locally ameliorating or mitigating ocean acidification and for storing carbon. Um, in addition, you know, this is a win-win scenario for all of us because these living systems provide so many other benefits that are um, critical to our, our missions and our goals across the state and having thriving ecosystems. So the actions here um, include implementing a statewide approach for restoring, conserving, and assisting in the migration of seagrass meadows, kelp forests, and salt marshes. Um, really advancing our aquaculture approaches that optimize ocean acidification, amelioration and carbon, and carbon storage while benefiting shellfish production. So thinking about the ways in which we can co-locate um, aquaculture as well as um, at, alongside these key habitats for their mutual benefits. Um, and the last action here is an important one which talks about the need to explore the potential for other innovative options for deploying living systems to ameliorate ocean acidification um, and or carbon storage. So this is sort of um, our opportunity to continue to think about things that we have not considered yet beyond seagrasses, kelps, and salt marshes, but how do we, um, how do we continue to be innovative and deploy pro pilot projects to think about other ways to slow um, or reduce ocean acidification. So strategy five looks really at um, the need to build resilience across affected communities, industries, and, in, and interests. Um, this strategy really seeks to drive a, and develop a collaborative constituency to sustain our resilience as OA intensifies. Um, and the actions here um, are, are several, but include engaging interested parties across public and private sectors, and advancing the resilience of the aquaculture industry, fisheries industry, and of coastal and ocean ecosystems. So our last strategy sort of brings it back to the beginning and why we're doing what we're doing. And this is engaging beyond state boundaries. So already California um, works very, very closely with our West Coast states and province. Um, so the actions here really seek to continue to lead those West Coast regional initiatives to reduce the causes and impacts of ocean acidification across the California current. Um, thinking beyond just our California current, the next action talks about how we need to sort of enhance our national level partnerships that improve our success in implementing this action plan while advancing the many federal ocean acidification related efforts. Um, and the third takes it one step further with continuing to build the international coalition to raise the global understanding of ocean acidification and spur action. So this is the beauty of why the International Ocean Acidification Alliance was formed, but having that ability to form partnerships across the world and have this interesting crosstalk and cross-pollination of ideas as we wrestle with really tough um, challenges ahead. So supporting this 10-year vision and these six five-year strategies with um, actions and sub-actions are met several appendices. And I won't dive into all of them, but I will just quickly hit on each of them. It's 
One, the first one is really looking at how this action plan for the state of California corresponds to the initial goals of the International Alliance to Combat Ocean Acidification. So those five goals I outlined at the beginning of this presentation. The next um, touches on how we got where we are, the consultation and review processes that informed the development of this action plan. Um, the third is a really important one and looks at how, you know, this is just the beginning. So how are we going to continue to assess progress um, in implementing the plan and really hold us all accountable through um, this plan? The fourth um, outlines key science, technology, and com communication needs um, identified to enable um, or implement OA policy and management. So throughout, um, throughout this plan, communication in particular is embedded across all of the strategies because it is critical to everything we're thinking about. How do we talk about these issues? How do we do appropriate outreach? How do we engage communities that have not been engaged as much at this point? Um, so you'll see that reflected across the six strategies. And the last appendix is a science plan that really will support the implementation of this action plan. Um, so just to touch on them quickly, again, the Ocean Acidification and Hypoxia Science Task Force that was stood up by Assembly Bill 2139 is, a, is serving as this responsive, responsive advisory body to provide guidance to Ocean Protection Council in the state in an ongoing manner um, as conditions change in ocean acidification across our West Coast. Um, we worked with this, the science task force to think about how they can develop a science plan as an appendix for this action plan. Um, in particular, this, they're working on this now and it's, it will go through its own separate scientific review process, but this team is really thinking about how they're going to create a science plan that will help to um, outline the science that is needed to overcome impediments to action and enable the successful implementation of the action plan. So again, this plan will be due out and in time for consideration by the Ocean Protection Council in late October of this year. The other appendix that I mentioned that is really critical to this document is um, the metrics of success and how we're going to track progress of this action plan. So, you know, again, this action plan is a, is a first step in a much longer effort. And we fully recognize that our understanding of OA is rapidly evolving, as is our ability to implement strategies to mitigate and adapt to OA. So we will really be looking at the, the ways in which we're chipping away at these various actions and sub-actions um, and we're going to have periodic assessments of the progress on the action plan and also um, think through revisions that are needed to update and refine the action plan. And these revisions um, and updates will be undertaken at a minimum of every five years to accommodate new scientific information and new lessons learned across our state. So the next step, um, we are in the, the middle of this public comment period, and the public comment period will close on October 31st. So I would encourage you all to submit written comments to us, and I'm really eager to hear your reactions to this public comment draft. Um, during September and October, we will incorporate these public comment revisions. And um, in, uh, on October 25th, there will be a potential adoption of the action plan by the Ocean Protection Council. So would also encourage many of you to tune into that meeting or join in person. Um, assuming adoption of the action plan, we really will elevate this work um, of California at relevant venues um, across the world, and in particular venues such as our ocean and the upcoming UN Climate Change Meeting or COP24. So with that, I will take your questions and any comments. Um, you know, we did provide a bit of guidance at the beginning of the public comment draft, but I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on these action strategies. Um, 
you know, do they reflect the understanding of the state's ocean acidification priorities? Um, if not, what else should we include? And um, do you think this five-year timeline for these these strategies and actions is appropriate and realistic? Um, and if not, what is a better time frame? Um, so any thoughts and feedback would be greatly appreciated. And thank you all for bearing with us through this presentation. Thank you, Jen. Just as a reminder, you're all still in listen-only mode. And so you, you can either chat in your questions, you can chat them to everybody, or you can just chat them to the panelists and we'll address them or use the raise your hand feature and we will call on you. Great, and so it looks like we'll give everyone just a little bit of time. Um, we have about 20 remaining minutes for questions. And so I can start with a question, Jen. Um, so of the six strategies in the plan, um, which do you think will be the easiest to implement and which ones might be more challenging? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I mean, they'll each have their, their own set of challenge, but I would say, um, I would say kind of bringing in different voices across the state of California and um, entities that already are dealing with sort of immediate challenges along our oceans and coasts will be, will be an, a, a challenge and a big task for all of us ahead. Um, and be and really being able to think about think further afield about the longer range impacts that we might be seeing while we have kind of day to day immediate threats ahead of us. Um, so I think strategy two and making sure we're bringing in all of the relevant players um, will be a, a challenge for us. But I'm one I'm I'm excited about thinking through. Um, and then. Yeah, I would say that would, is probably one that's kind of a, a challenge ahead for Ocean Protection Council. How do we coordinate all of these different players? Um, and how do we also, uh, you know, strategy five, This we talk a lot about the need to build resilience. Um, and this strategy really tries to think about the resilience of many different entities and communities and industries. So, um, it will be it, that will take kind of concerted work to making through making sure we're thinking about what does it mean to be resilient in each of these kind of uh, potentially affected um, interests that we're thinking about. Great, thank you. And it looks like we have some questions now from audience members. And so I'll start with a chatted question. Um, and excuse me if I mispronounce your name, but we have one from. Rebecca Schwartz uh, Lesberg Audubon um, asks, who is the intended audience for the action plan? Is it meant to be a quasi internal document for Ocean Science Trust and Ocean Protection Council to guide programmatic work? Um, no, no, the, so the intended audience is definitely, um, I would say first and foremost, um, state of California government. Um, and of course, there's, it does provide a roadmap for Ocean Protection Council and Ocean Science Trust to continue to work and lead on ocean acidification. But we are trying with this action plan to also think about state government and also um, other communities, local government, um, fishing communities, other affected industries. So it is kind of taking a, a step beyond that and engaging and um, finding a way to support new entities as well. Great, thank you for that. Um, and it looks like we have a 
somebody is raising their hand, Debbie Azeltine Nielsen at CDFW. So Debbie, I am going to unmute you. Let me know if you can talk now. Debbie, are you there? Um, looks like you are unmuted, but I will go to another chatted question and then I will try this again. Um, okay, so we have a question from the audience. Um, it seems like promoting aquaculture is a key element of the state's OA strategy, but the aquaculture permitting process currently in place is prohibitive to many entrepreneurs trying to launch aquaculture projects. How does the strategy reconcile this in the current permitting process? Or how do you, sorry, how do you plan to reconcile this strategy in the current permitting process? Yeah, that's a great question. And I know that is a, a big topic for many of us across the state. Um, I would say that this action plan is not trying to reconcile the permitting process. What we are trying to identify and highlight is the ways in which aquaculture and these um, submerged aquatic vegetation can sort of be coupled and co-benefit one another. So how do we have an aquaculture operation um, alongside these key habitats so that we see mutual benefits to each, um, but we're not addressing the permitting hurdles and those challenges because, again, Ocean Protection Council is, is not a regulatory entity, but we are trying to um, make sure that we are being as innovative and thoughtful with our approaches to coastal and ocean management going forward. Great, thank you. And we have another person raising their hand, so I'm going to try this again. Jen Eckerly, I'm going to unmute you. Can you talk now? You might need to unmute on your end as well. And if you're calling in via phone, you can press star six and it should unmute your line. Hmm. Seems like we're having an unmuting problem. Um, all right, let's, if you have the ability to chat, I would just, um, let's just take chats and then we'll try this. We'll try one more unmute after this, uh, answering this chatted question. Um, how can local and regional nonprofits in the marine ecosystem and coastal conservation arena engage in implementing the plan? Do you anticipate any grant programs that would provide funding for nonprofits to implement approved projects? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> so one of the big things that Ocean Protection Council does, in addition to coordinating a lot of different entities um, statewide, is grant making. Um, and with their recent governor's budget, we have some new funds coming in that specifically are allocating, um, are allocated to our climate program. So what we wanted to first do is really have a solid plan like this action plan in place before rolling out new grant programs and funding streams. But I think that will be a key next effort for us is to think through how we um, how we develop and um, advertise grant programs that extend across the state of California. Um, one other thing we're thinking a lot about is how do we take these funds that OPC has and partner with other funding entities so that we can make those funds go even further um, and support all of the different communities and players in this space. So I do anticipate that will be a big next step for Ocean Protection Council. Great, and here is another question um, that was chatted in. 
How will the action plan be incorporated into state and local laws and regulations? That is a great question that I think is um, yet to be determined. Um, yeah, so, you know, again, this, our commitment to the international alliance that calls on government entities to build action plans is not binding and is not mandated. Um, and OPC is not a regulatory entity. So what we try to do is um, lay out the best available science um, and do really great coordination and funding to make sure that these efforts can be incorporated into laws and regulations and that entities are supported, but um, that is the question that we, we can't answer quite yet because I think we need to see the rest of the processes sort of unfold after the action plan is adopted. Great, and here's a question, another chatted in question, and we have, um, for those of you trying to speak, after this chatted in question, I'll try to unmute you again, but it seems like you're going to need to join audio via the computer in order to speak. So we'll try that after this question. Will there be engagement with tribal governments on the plan and future funding opportunities? Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the question. Yes, yeah, so again, um, some of our funding, of course, is supports tribal governments as well. So, if when we have when we have grant um, funding requests, you know that is an opportunity for tribal governments to um, either submit proposals or um, be eligible for funding. So, you know, going back to one of my earlier answers, we are thinking through how we expand kind of the community of players on ocean acidification and tribes and tribal governments are a key player in this space. So I would love to talk more about that offline too. Great, and it looks like, so Debbie Azeltine Nielsen at CDFW has chatted in her comment. Debbie, I also have tried to unmute you. So if you are able to speak now, go ahead. And if not, I will just read your comment. All right, I'll just, I'm just going to read what Debbie wrote. Um, so Debbie says, I don't see any reference to the California Current Acidification Network or CCAN, either in the history or as an organization that includes West Coast fishermen, academic researchers, federal scientists in Washington, Oregon, and California managers. So Jen, I'm not sure if you can speak to that. Um, Debbie says, CCAN can provide a way to work with these various West Coast entities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that question, Debbie. Um, I mean, we have been working with CCAN to elevate this action plan and to make sure we're soliciting comments across that network, um, but we could do a better job, I'm sure, in the draft plan of calling out and recognizing um, this, this regional network, um, as well as the other regional networks that we're partnering really closely with, whether it's the West Coast Ocean Partnership or the Pacific Coast Collaborative um, or others. So thanks for that comment. Right, and here's um, another question. I may have missed this, but what is your preferred method for receiving comments on the action plan? Are comments posted within the PDF okay? Yeah, so we'd rather not get comments posted within the PDF because that would be a pretty heavy lift for us. So written comment letters to um, COPC public at resources.ca.gov um, is how we'd like to receive comments, edits, and questions. Um, again, all of that guidance for public comment is on the second page of the draft action plan. Great, and it looks like that is all of the, the chatted in questions. Sorry about the technical difficulties with unmuting. Oh wait, here's another another question just came in. Um, 
Regarding aquaculture permitting, I would encourage the OPC and OST to look into the state and federal permitting processes for both kelp aquaculture and production marketing of kelp-based products. Many states with nascent kelp aquaculture industries are running into barriers at these stages and the state OA plan should include an assessment of those barriers and possible solutions if they want strategy four and action two to succeed. Great, thank you. Is that, who's that question from? It is from... Meg, okay, yes, yeah. yeah. thank you, Meg. Um, I completely agree with you and have been talking a bit with colleagues in Washington about this. Um, so I think that's something that we could build out a little bit um, in the sort of innovative actions and strategies part of that that section. Great, and we have about seven more minutes. If anyone has remaining questions, um, just tap them in. Otherwise, we can wrap up. Um, great, I don't see any remaining questions. As a reminder, um, final comments, public comments are due by Friday, August 31st um, of this year, so please get them in. And there's the information on how to submit your comments or questions. I know a few of you had um, some things that um, could be followed up with with Jen offline, so feel free to do that or um, provide more detailed comments to those you submitted today at the email provided. And we'll be posting the webinar recording on the Ocean Protection Council project page and following up via email. So thank you again, everyone, for, for attending and feel free to, to reach out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.